Hello, boys and girls. We are going to review our 8.2 notes today. Our objectives for today is to identify independent and dependent variables from given statements and to then express the relationship between two quantities as a linear equation. Before we get to that, we are going to review the concept of cause and effect. That's going to help us with our independent and dependent variables. First, imagine turning up the heat on a stove and placing a pot of water on it. Which would be the cause and which is the effect? Heat from the stove or boiling water? Which one of these would be the cause and which one would result as the effect? Take a second to think about it. Well, in order for the water to boil, the heat must have come from the stove first. So therefore, the heat from the stove must be the cause and then what's happening as a result is the effect. So the boiling water is the effect. In language arts, you probably are familiar with the concept of cause and effect. Well, in science and in math, these two terms go by different names. The cause is known as the independent variable and the effect is known as the dependent variable because the effect depends on the cause or it depends on the independent variable to get a result. So with that said, let's practice um, independent and dependent variables. I have two examples here and I want you to identify uh, which part of the statement is an independent variable and which is a dependent variable. So example A, the plant was watered, so it grew. What is the independent variable? And what's the dependent variable in this statement? Take a second, you can pause the video if you want. Well, if I think about it, the plant grew as a result of it being watered or after it being watered. So being watered is the independent variable and then it growing is the dependent variable. It depended on the water. For example, B, the teacher was very happy because all the students followed directions. Identify the independent and the dependent variable. You can pause it again if you'd like. So let me see here. The students had to have followed the directions first. So that must mean that is the independent variable. And as a result, it made the teacher very happy. That, the teacher being happy, was the dependent variable. It depended on the student's behavior of following directions. Now, this is a, like, another example where you don't always have it in the same order. It's not always cause and effect, independent variable, and dependent variable. There are situations where you see the, in, the dependent variable come first and then the independent variable. So you have to really think about it. So let's apply this to some word problems. And this is where you can start filling in your notes. Example one, Caleb is X years old. His sister is 10 years older than he is. So I'm gonna highlight some important information here. Let's see, Caleb is X years old and his sister is 10 years older than he is. If his sister is Y years old, Write an equation that relates their 
ages. So this is the second part of our objective now is that we are relating the independent and the dependent variable. Well, if Caleb is X years old, his sister is X 10 years older. So I, in order for her to be 10 years older, you must have to add on 10 years. So the sister's age is X plus 10. It's Caleb's age plus 10 more years. And I can ask myself and see if that makes sense. If Caleb was five years old, his sister's 10 years older, that would make her 15 years old. Well, if x equals 5, 5 plus 10 equals 15. So my expression makes sense. But we want an equation. So now we're going to convert this to an equation. The next part of the word problem tells us that if his sister is y years old, that must mean that we are going to substitute sister with the variable y. That now gives us an equation that y equals x plus 10. His sister's age equals Caleb's age plus 10 more. With this equation, we are now going to identify what is the independent variable and what's the dependent variable. Well, in a linear equation, and the way that we get linear, if you recognize there's the word line in it, a linear equation is simply an equation that represents a line. If I map it out on a graph, which we will be doing later in the chapter, it will create a straight line. So now, in a linear equation, x is called the independent variable, and y is called the dependent variable because the value of y depends on the value of x. We would not be able to figure out his sister's age if we didn't know how old Caleb was. So that tells us that y depends on x. So his sister's age depends on x. So y is the dependent variable and x is the independent variable in this equation. Now, writing y as an expression using x is called expressing y in terms of x. We've been talking about our expressions in the previous chapter, and we are familiar with in terms of x. That simply means that x is in one of your terms. But now we're saying express y in terms of x. So y equals x plus 10. You're, it's a different way of expressing the value of y. They are the same. Y is the same as x plus 10. His sister's age is the same as adding 10 to Caleb's age. Okay, let's try another word problem. Here is example two. A rhombus has sides that are r centimeters long. If the perimeter of the rhombus is p centimeters, write an equation to represent p in terms of r. That must mean that I'm saying p equals something that has r in the expression. Since we're trying to find the perimeter, we have a quadrilateral shape here, four-sided figure. If one of the sides is is um, has the length of r, it looks like these little ticks are saying that they're all congruent or they're all the same length. So this must also be r as well. This also has a length of r centimeters and this has a length of r centimeters. And if I wanna find the perimeter, that must mean I wanna find the whole distance around the shape. So I would have to add up all of these distances. Therefore, P would equal R plus R plus R plus R. I am expressing P in terms of R, but we know that we can simplify this equation further. P 
equals four R's or four groups of R's. And this would be our final answer, our final equation. Now let's identify uh, what is our dependent and independent variables. Well, the blank depends on the length of our sides. So if the perimeter P depends on the length of the sides, then the perimeter must be the dependent variable. And you would fill that in here. And the independent variable, it's depending on it, so it's, it's the cause, essentially. Whatever we end up placing or substituting for R, that is going to let us know what the perimeter is. So the length of the sides, or R, just the letter R, would be the independent variable, and P would be the dependent variable. And that is it for today's notes.